guys did such a great job of limiting Fernando Tatis Jr. and Manny Machado in terms of really any damage against you. In your opinion, what's the best way to attack Acuna as well as Freddie Freeman? Yeah, the Braves have a great lineup. You know, it's uh, it's somewhat similar to Padres, you know, one through nine. Um, they can kind of beat you. So there's no real secret to it. You just try to make good pitches. You know, I think Acuna and Freddie obviously at the top, you know, really get them going. But I mean, there's everybody's really swinging the bats well for them through Ozuna, Darno, all those guys. So uh, it's definitely a good matchup for us. And, uh, you know, it's, it'll be a good challenge. This pattern of Walker starting game one and you starting game two has really paid dividends for you guys. How much of a comfort knowing, you know, every time you're going to take the ball, when it's going to be for you and, and knowing uh, exactly uh, when you're going to be called upon? Well, it just, uh, yeah, you know, I think with Walker, you know, whatever his ability is to go deep in the games or not to have uh, to have him going and, you know, it's it's going to be it's going to be a good outing. You know, we just kind of we feel very confident with Walker and what he's doing and um, you know, I'm feeling good right now, too. And then we got a lot of other guys between Tony, D. May, Julio that can all throw the ball well. So um, we feel good one through five with our guys that, uh, you know, in a seven game series that, that we can do something good. You also have an incredibly well rested and talented bullpen. How much of a satisfaction is there in that knowing that the arms that you may need to be called upon are, are still fresh and ready to go? <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I think both teams coming into it are in a pretty good spot, obviously, with their bullpen, you know, only having to play five games so far. And, um, you know, their starting pitching has done well for them as well. So um, they got they got all their guys rested. So it's really both teams at their best. And um, it should be a fun series. Thank you, Clayton. Next question is from Dave Vasse. Go ahead. Clayton, yesterday Walker said that, you know, you're really – relationship with him has changed a little bit from his perspective where he could joke around with you and get away with a little bit more now. How would you describe the way your relationship has evolved over the last couple of years with him? That's different for Walker. Uh, no, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, Walk's been awesome. You know, I think, I think we've learned from each other, you know, a little bit, just, uh, I like the way he goes about things. And, um, I think it can kind of relax me at times just to see how he does it. And, I think likewise for him, maybe I can give him a little bit more structure to what he does. And I think it's a good balance for both of us. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, he goes out there and the way he competes, you know, obviously his stuff separates himself, but he's a very, very good competitor on the mound. And uh, at the end of the day, the conviction that he has is what separates him. So, um, you know, off the field wise, yeah, I think it's it's been great for both of us. And um, I like watching him throw. Thank you. Next question is from John Morosi. Go ahead. Thanks, Clayton. Uh, Max Fried has talked about his admiration for you and, and growing up a Dodger fan himself. Uh, how would you describe what you've seen from him uh, just from a distance here in the last few years? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, I've heard about him, you know, when he was in the minor leagues and, um, you know, watching him pitch, it's, um, it's really good. You know, I remember when I was coming up, I didn't have the pitches that he had and, um, you know, I like watching him throw against the teams that I'm about to face and things like that. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's evolved a lot, you know, he's fastball curveball, but, um, you know, he's got that slider now that he's working with. That's a great pitch for him. And he's throwing the change up, throws the two seamer. So, um, he's, he's evolved a lot in his time in the big leagues and, um, he's gotten a lot better and I've, I've heard nothing but good things about his work ethic. And I mean, the school that he went to in LA is about, you know, 15 minutes from my house. So, uh, I heard about him a lot and, um, He's fun to watch. Next question is from Jorge Castillo. Go ahead. Hey, Clay, and, uh, after that last start against San Diego, you mentioned that the slider wasn't quite where you wanted it. Just wondering if that's a feel thing that night, or you know, are you trying to find something between starts to, to get it to where you want it to be? Yeah, you try to do both. You know, Obviously, you don't know how it's going to come out the night of the game, but definitely try and work on things in between starts to make sure it's there. Any idea how many friends and family members are going to try to come to these games, particularly tomorrow? Um, yeah, I think we'll have a few tonight. And then uh, they didn't announce the game times till like, I don't know, an hour ago. So uh, I, just depending on people can get off work and things like that. But we'll definitely, we'll definitely have some tickets in the stands for sure. Will it make things any different knowing that you got friends and family? In the crowd? I think just fans in general. Yeah, it makes it different. You know, to be able to have some fans in the stands will be, uh, I mean, I think it'll be a welcome sight for everybody just to um, make it feel kind of normal again.
And lastly, um, did you catch the Lakers game last night? Uh, I did not, no. But uh, obviously very happy for them and uh, for the city of L.A. It's pretty cool to see what they were able to do. And, um, man, they spent 93 days in that bubble, so I'm glad they won. That's a, that's a long time in that thing. So I, I'm just happy for them. And, um, you know, it's, it's very cool to, you know, be in the same city as that. It's pretty special. Thank you. Next question is from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead. And talking to Justin Turner yesterday about the seven games, no off days format this round, he said he likes it because it uh, forces teams to show their depth and you can't ride, say, three starters like some teams have in the past. What do you think of the format? I mean, he's right. You know, I think uh, you're going to use everybody, you know, seven games, seven days. Um, there's, you know, there's not too many guys that can just throw seven straight days. So, um, you know, it's it's going to be taxing for both sides, especially the bullpens. But, um, you know, like JT said, you know, we feel good about, you know, our guys one through 28. And uh, that's going to be, a, I th we think that's a strength of ours. And as far as what I think about it, um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's, it's, I think it's favorable to us. So I like it. Thanks. A question from Rowan Kavner. Go ahead. Hey, Clayton, when you haven't pitched uh, against a team in, in a season, especially like a, you know, in a series like this, do you, are you able to draw on, on previous, you know, even years against players at all? Or is it just so different from year to year? Um, yeah, usually pretty different. You know, I don't really look too much about what I've done against guys personal history wise. Um, I just think, I think there needs to be some recency bias as far as what they've done at the box and in the box and things like that. But obviously we faced these guys two years ago in the playoffs, but, um, you know, they have some of the same guys, but obviously there's a lot of guys different. So not a whole lot you can glean from that. Um, but try to watch what they've done the past month or so, see what they're doing and, um, try to adjust accordingly. Any other questions for Clayton? Thanks.